Before we resume the play, I would like to introduce the members of the cast. When you hear your name, please stand up and wait for the audience. Lanny D. Butler. Hey, everybody look around. <laughs> Antonio Divas. Giovanni Jacobo. Right. Charles Kirk. Princess L. Miles. Zaret J. Rogers. And myself, I'm uh, Phil W. Weiss. Proceed with the rest of the play. Don't get, don't get all pumped up now, okay? That smell of success that got you high on it. That smell of success that you got high on has different aromas, some of which stink. Man, I was an internationally famous television star, the epitome of middle class values. Millions of people practically swearing by me. And now, like, my life is a disaster. Yet, we are alive, and we are all surviving, and in this world, that is no small accomplishment. But I don't just want to survive. I want to excel, get to the top, have it all, and for a while, I was up there. I was champ. Then you became champ. Started getting sloppy. Lose your focus. Got all cocky. Like you weren't cocky? But I can back it up. You couldn't. So you went from cool to fool. And if I remember, you went down fast. Tell you the truth, I got so worried about you, I thought about visiting you. While I was in prison? No! That wouldn't have been cool. I meant afterwards, when you were trying to find yourself. You know, I could have used a little bit of that money care too, buddy. You? <laughs> Don't make me laugh. And your argument, your arrogance, was told too much for anyone to bear it. Me? Arrogant? You must be mistaking me for someone else. No! Mistake, bro. You were so smug, <laughs> even at your trial, hiding behind your lawyers like you were some kind of white banker or politician who could pay his way out of anything. Yeah, I didn't buy my way out of anything. I didn't do it. Don't you believe me? <laughs> I was too busy enjoying life. It's probably your case. I was out on the golf course uh, with my father practicing my golf. At that time, I still had a career to attend to. I, I don't know what I was doing at that time, but the last thing I would have wanted to do was watch you squirming on television. Yeah, I can't believe it. Uh, is this how little you guys care about me? It's not that you didn't care. It's that maybe you got right. <laughs> maybe <we> didn't. <laughs> well, whatever happened to Black Solidarity? That's nothing but a myth created by white politicians to scare white people into voting for them. The fact is that all of us are wrapped up in our own problems. You could leave me that. You could leave me out of that. I enjoyed my life. Yeah, helping women and bragging. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How lucky is that? Maybe to you. To me, I call it having fun. I paid my dues to have the right to enjoy the fruits of my labor. To become a laughing stock? Nobody ever laughed at me. You're just jealous. Excuse me, Milt, but any of us can get women get it from what? Why did you have to write a book about it? For the money. You said practically every record in the history of basketball, and you still needed money? What women. happened to all the money you earned? Women. <laughs> That's what happened. <laughs> <laughs> Is this obsession with women a problem only for black women? That's a loaded question. If we say no, then we become accused of being queer, and if we say yes, then we may be accused of being shallow. I think all men are obsessed with women. I like the company of women. What's wrong with that? I don't see women as being a problem. Rather, it's the way we relate to them. And I relate to them just fine. You never heard of any woman complaining about me, have you? So. I must be doing something right. Being obsessed with women has nothing, nothing to do with being black. 
But you know what? Smart guy, maybe you asked the wrong question. Maybe the women are the problem. Whores, prostitutes, call girls, dancers, escorts, actresses, call them what you want. They float what they have and we notice it. At, at least I do. I'm a man. I can't help it. Are we going to start demonizing women now? Remember, guys, we all have mothers. You! You leave my mother out. Jack, <laughs> no one is on your mother. All right, we're talking generalities, not specifics. You can always you call my sister a whore. Of course not. But it's some guy, and maybe she is. Or at least he thinks she is. So, brother, what does Einstein have to do with this? Einstein? Who mentioned Einstein? He's talking about relativity. <laughs> Listen, uh, Mr. Goggle, we're not talking a little bit of physics, okay? Uh, so keep Einstein out of this. I love Mama. She was poor, but she tried her best. The praise of life is you. She had to be special. She was. But my other mother was boxing. She told me all about life. Why, you were getting much in the face. Yeah, dishing it out too. Why am I like, so preoccupied with the box? Oh my gosh, man. Is there anything that a black man do that's right with you? Or we're just a bunch of maladjusted fools? Hey, hey, come on, man. I didn't say that. But you implied it. Listen, bro. Don't put words in my mouth. Okay? Whether you like it or not, the vast majority of inmates in prison today are black. That's a fact. In a racist society, that's a fact too. Man, not all blacks are failures. Yo, what ever happened to black entertainers and black doctors and lawyers and teachers? Bunch of phonies sucking up to the white boss. Can you be middle class without being a seller? Sorry you can. I did it. <laughs> You're just a tall black freak. Congratulations. Yeah, I did it too. You were charged with double homicide, spent years in prison, and you're telling me that you're middle class? I don't think so. Hey, stop judging me, man. You know, I, that's not right. I'm a black man who became middle class. Well, stop your bragging. You're ashamed of what you are. Still a street nigger. I ask that we not use that word. It's part of our language. I agree with Milton. The word is just too harsh and too offensive. You know, it's such a bunch of three with God. Act like you never heard that word before. We've all heard it too often. I don't need to hear it again. All I was trying to say was that bro is refusing to be honest with himself. And you're wrong, bro. Like, I never forget my roots. In fact, you're all of your 40s acting like you're so prim and proper as if you're white. If by roots, you mean where we're from? That's something we know it is. <laughs> What's the point of going down memory lane? We all moved on. I was born and raised in Philadelphia. So what? Our roots are more than geographical. They're cultural too. Yeah. Whenever I hear that word culture, I grit my teeth. It's such a loaded word. It can be, depending on how it's used. Yeah, I came from a good family. That produced you. What do you mean by that remark? Do you think that someone with parent? Do you think someone with parent would be proud of? Yes! I am! Now, I made something of myself. I excelled in my chosen profession, and I became a rather popular actor and entertainer. Yeah, uh, but then you messed up. If I did, it wasn't because of my roots. Yeah, I guess. Uh, I can say the same about myself. I like this. It's been good. I mean, I played ball, got married, had kids, cruised around a little bit, <laughs> and wrote work in movies. I mean, been a good ride. You know, I couldn't have I couldn't have had better set of parents. My father was a career army man, and my mother was a very loving woman. I was brought up well. I owe all my success to my father. He believed in me. So, if we came from such good families, then why are our lives such disasters? Get off your high horse already, before I knock you off. Who the hell do you know about my life? Until the day we never met. So how can you talk about me? There were rumors. All sewer talks from the press. I've been a good father. Wonderful provider. My kids never had to worry anything. Mine too. I've taken good care of my kids. So you're curved with the elevator. 
this. Of course. For some reason, I find that hard to believe. Oh, believe me. Well, okay. All right. Then we're all good, responsible parents, except for those who play the smart. <laughs> <laughs> we're all decent, law abiding guys, but we're rebels too. That's what's gotten us into trouble. Not rebels, entertainers, performers. That's right. Showmen, but symbols too. A gifted black man who run faster and jump higher than anyone else. And, and hit a golf ball further and straighter too. <laughs> that too. You showed them, Tiger. Yeah, I guess I did. But now I'm on the sidelines. And I don't know what to do with myself. See, that's the problem. None of us know what to do with ourselves. They were jocks. What's the jocks supposed to do when they time was up? I, well, I mean, you became actors. Yeah, but it wasn't the same. You know, at least, at least it wasn't for me. Like, on the field, I was practically a god. But in the movies, I was just another actor and not a good one at that. <laughs> yeah. I watched a couple of your movies. Like that war movie that was set in World War II? You were good. And that Western? You almost got that girl. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's, that's, that's the problem. I think, like, almost. Like, got upstage for that by a white actor who couldn't even ride a horse. I mean, he needed a stunt double. By the way, it happened to be a pro. You don't say. And yeah, I do say. But it was a paycheck. And I needed that money, so I had to pay my album. So you manned up. Me? I got hold into court. Why didn't you just do the right thing and pay? Pay those bitches? <laughs> no way. They were trying to take me for everything I had. But you had kids, man. So what? I still had to survive. These women didn't love me. They didn't care about me. They didn't give a flying leap about me. They put out because I had money and they wanted to cash in. But they were sneaky. They acted like they loved me and I fell for that. I have feelings too. You do? Yeah, I do. Shameless fool. Why can't you be honest? You're embarrassing only because the judge had publicly reported you dead. And I lost my home in the, pro in the process. Believe me, I felt more than just embarrassment. You should have been thinking about your head, not your dick. Mocking woman, getting them pregnant. You thought you could get away with that? Not have to deal with the consequences? Oh, can that talk. I'm a man. Stop preaching at me. Are you really a Muslim? I am. You should have answered that call earlier. I answered it when I did, and it helped me. It was a personal thing. At least I didn't make it a big deal about it like you did. I didn't make it a big deal about it. It was the press that made it into a big deal. Then afterward, they vilified me and made me out to be like a traitor. Because you refused to be drafted. You were breaking the law. Wrong! By forcing me to go into the army, the government was violating my freedom of religion. So you becoming a Muslim had nothing to do with you trying to avoid the draft? That's right. It was a profoundly spiritual thing. I had you off to you. You pulled it off in your one day case. Thanks, bro. Uh, so does being a Muslim provide a peace of mind? Yes. I'll tell you why. Because it's the one faith that allows me to be who I really am, instead of playing the role posed on me by the white man through Christianity. <sighs> My father was an ordained minister, and if he was still alive, he'd be distressed by what you just said. True. Christianity is a religion of love, while Islam is the one of hate. I take offense to that remark. First, I didn't mean any disrespect regarding the father, but you asked me a straight question, and I gave you a straight answer. I turned and attacked my religion, a subject that you really know nothing about. You know, maybe, maybe I was a little off base with that remark about Islam, but for me, religion did not figure into my life. There was no way that I was going to become a minister. I was too busy playing football. I only mentioned my father because the subject of religion came up. So, you repudiated the teachings of your father? What are you talking about, man? Nobody repudiated anything. All of us were exposed to religion. So what? 
But for me, Christianity, for all that talk of salvation and whatnot, offered no answers to the question of how a black man can make it this way in life and keep his identity and sanity and survive in a white dominated racist society. I don't think so. Me neither. But I remember when I was growing up, the minister of my church was one of the leaders of the community. That's the way it used to be. Yeah. Still is. It was the church that held neighborhoods together and still does today. Have we lost our ways? Hey, hey, don't get all sappy on me now. Save that junk for the movies. I'm serious, bro. The church gave the black communities cohesion and hope. No way. Churches were a sham. They were clones of the white churches. That's all. Look, my parents were church going people. And what did it do for them? They were able to raise you. And they did a good job. My parents were hard working people who never had the opportunity to even go further because they were brainwashed to believe that they need to know their place. I hate it. Just thinking about it makes me so outraged. So, converting to Islam made the members less painful? No, it didn't. But it gave me an outlet through which I couldn't demonstrate my anger without doing anything really awful. No wonder you became a boxer. I never liked boxing, but I was good at it. So I went that direction. I'm not by nature a violent man. You're not a violent man? Fun. I am. I hit people for a living and I loved it. That's where we differ. No, you only think we differ. We're the same. I never raped anyone and spent time in prison. You had your brushes with the law too, so don't come off as being so high and mighty. I think we've all had brushes with the law. Typical story for the American black man. I never got into trouble. There's always an exception. Yeah, how did you manage that? I guess I wasn't washed out. You guys are. Hmm. Now who's acting so superior that maybe you didn't have the balls to assert yourself? I took that on the basketball court. That was enough for me. <laughs> But there's more to life than just playing sports. There is? Yes. Except I didn't realize that until much later. Well, for me, playing sports was everything. It went too. Yeah, women too. What a sad ending like you. Who are you to judge me? Look at you. Scores of women coming out, out of the woodwork, complaining about you. All sensationalist lies. You mean? Over 40 women are lying about you. They're all liars. That's right. They came by, gave them drinks, and got to know each other, but we did. While you were married. <laughs> but what about that squeaky clean image you were selling to the public? Am I the only one who's ever socialized with you? <laughs> but your image was based on a lie. That's your opinion, and please don't judge me. Well, we can't help but judge you. None of you are in a position to judge me. We've all done our share of work. <laughs> <laughs> so it's okay that I fuck 20,000 women. You guys are real beginning to discuss it. Man, get off your high horse. You turned your back on the whole country. The country that stripped me of my title, do strip me of the politics, and I'm supposed to love this country? Keep in mind that we're public figures, and once you go public, you're fair game for every shill, comment, and reporter looking to make a quick <coughs> buck at your expense. Can't disagree with you, with you on that. I remember that one TV reporter. He built my entire career on hyping me. I knew he wasn't doing it because he loved me. <laughs> Maybe he did love you. Weren't you always telling people how pretty you were? Maybe he wanted to uh, take you up on that. Oh, man, all that stuff was part of my life. Still, you're not a bad looking guy. I wish I could say the same about you. But I didn't. But if I did, I'd be lying. And I'm not a liar. It goes against my religion. By that, you mean this one? What other religion would I be talking about? The more you guys know about religion, the more you're losing it. So you get lost. Who needs you? Go back to your golf course. And go rap a club around your head. I'll take my religion seriously. And good for you, but who cares? There's only one true God, and that is Allah. Okay. And Muhammad was his prophet. 
That's good to hear. Now, 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 can it? Last thing I need is to have anyone preaching to me, be he a Jew, or Muslim, or Christian, or whatever. That's not the way it used to be. Blacks have a much more respectful attitude toward the church. The church is important when things are going when things are going bad for blacks. Right now, I have no need for it. Yeah, yeah, I don't mind a preacher preaching at us. Just as long as they keep the sermon short. There's nothing worse than a preacher going on and on about how much we need the Lord. All sweet talk meant to keep blacks down. I am so grateful that I'm alive now and not, let's say, 75 years ago. Back then, forget it. It would have been, I would have been a nobody. No way would they have let a black man on the golf course. Did any black man ever try? You know, I really don't know. For all we know, there could have been, a, uh, there could have been, for all we know, back then, there might have been a black man with the golf clubs, just like Diger, who was begging for a chance to play, but never got the chance. That's sad. I mean, the same thing we for any sport. I mean, if I had been alive after World War II, World War I, I seriously doubt that I would have been getting, given any chance to play. But who lost out the most? Us or the country? Us. I mean, we were denied an opportunity. But the country was denied the opportunity to see the best players in the world, which made the sports people who were playing the world. Which made the sports people who were playing to watch the shame. Uh, so what about the country? I mean, we as black people were put down and kept down, period. Till I came along. Huh. So say, as soon as you changed your name, the country wanted to hang you. But I stood fast. And today I'm considered a hero. Maybe things aren't as bad as for blacks as we think. I wouldn't go that far, but things did improve enough for us to make a buck. Yeah. <laughs> Making a buck. That's what it's all about. You know, I once heard this pro wrestler say, you live by the bucket and you die by the bucket. But to me, those are profound words. It just shows anyone can be a philosopher. You hear that, Tiger? Inside of you is a philosopher. <laughs> well, you know, I did go to college. I did too. But it wasn't to study philosophy. I was there to make money for the university. And for that, you were well rewarded. Later, not while I was playing for the school. They gave you a scholarship, right? Right, but I was no scholar. <laughs> for some reason, I, I cannot visualize you hitting the books and writing term papers. What are you saying? That my that my going to college was a fraud? I, that's right. I mean, you just said it. <laughs> I was asking a question. Listen, I attended a major university on a football scholarship, and I was there to play football, not learn nuclear physics. They had other programs for that. That doesn't mean we didn't learn anything. We did value of our bodies as a tool to make money. For some reason, that doesn't sound so good. I think what the brother was trying to say. I don't need you to translate for me, all right? I'm taking, talking plainly, and if you don't understand what I'm saying, that's your problem. I thought about going to college was supposed to prove my mind. I only heard that because I never went to college. So, I didn't either. I guess that's what I mean, you were too smart for me. Hey, don't be such a wise guy. I went to college not even graduated without a football scholarship. I, you know, I, I wouldn't have been able to make it out of my neighborhood. Maybe I should have gone to college. On what? A boxing scholarship? I've never heard of a school offering a boxing scholarship. How come schools are willing to dish out money for football and basketball, but not for boxing? That's not fair. Boxing has a negative image. Two people pounding on each other? Oh, and 22 people pounding on each other is okay. That's different, all right? It's a team sport, and the goal is to score, not to destroy your opponent. Then how come in every game someone has to be carried off the field? It's a contact sport. I mean, so that's bound to happen. Mm -hmm. Boxing is a contact sport, too. They're both contact sports. Thank goodness they got into golf. Did anyone ever tell you that you're nothing but a pansy? You sure you're not really white? No, not one drop of white blood. Blood is red. It's an expression. Here's another expression. Fuck you. <laughs> what brought that on? Everything you say! In fact, your very presence here deeply annoys me, and I wish that you would leave. Hold on then, bro. You don't need to cop that. Look, I don't even know why he's here. You got black skin, but there's nothing
everything about you that's black. Now, all of us here came from the neighborhood. You came from somewhere else. I too am black. I'm as black as anyone here. Oh, no, you're not. You're half Chinese. You mean Thai. What's the difference? A lot. Wait a minute. I bet Chinese and Thais, and to me, they all look the same. So what do you say? I already told Khalid that I already told Khalid that I'm half Thai, not half Chinese. Stop your nitpicking. Stop your damn nitpicking. Thai, Chinese, who cares? You're half Asian, right? No wonder the bro lost his cool. I didn't lose my cool. You got hot under the collar. You stop playing with me. I'm real. The dude here isn't. And why would you just go back to your white friends? Like all your friends are white? I know white people, but they're not my friends. Did that include your wife? You mean my late wife? And you keep her out of this. Who? How do I miss her? If she was so sweet. I think you better do a reality check on your memory. You know, there's a lot of more important stuff to talk about. Like what? Like our health. People take us for granted. Treat us like we're indestructible machines. And we're not. I'm in constant pain. And no one cares. Man, sometimes I can barely walk. Pain got so bad that I had to quit football. I used to believe that nothing could hurt me. That's how you think when you're young. It's how you got to think to get going. But it's, it's crazy. We get hit, and we get injured, and it's reported on the news, and all people care about is, when is this guy going to return? And also, is he faking it? Then he's accused of malingering or having a bad attitude or being selfish or not being a team player or, or even being a head case. Mm -hmm. You know how many black men are accused of that garbage? That wasn't the case when I was playing. I mean, in those days, I mean, the black athlete knew his place. If he acted out, especially in public, he was gone. Now, I did some gripping when I was playing, but it was about wanting to play more. Both of us love you. We had a good relationship. Why are you able to produce? That's the bottom line. Can't could we produce? That's all they were interested in. For which we were well paid. Of course, we were well paid. But was the money worth it if it destroyed our health in the process? Well, what was the alternative? Not to play? Not to take the money? Go out in the real world and, and, and get a normal job. Would any of us have been happy with that? I wouldn't have. It's amazing what money will get you to do it. But you were playing a sissy game. <laughs> <laughs> that required walking several miles every day and playing under all kinds of weather conditions. Remember, golf is played outdoors, not in an arena. Oh, wow. I tried playing some golf. And I must admit, it's a lot harder than it looks. It's especially hard on your knees and low back. That's why most golf players sooner or later move their knees and, and back and have to have surgery. And still, that's not the same as taking a hit on the head or, 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 or being tackled hard by 250 pound guys charging at you helmet first. What can I say? People pay huge amounts of money to watch me play. If you don't like it, so what? Who do you think you are to be something so high and mighty? Your career went down like the sinking of the Titanic. You must have lost at least a billion dollars worth of endorsements. At one point you were being touted as the greatest golfer in the history of that so-called sport. But you blew it. You and your golf. You had it all and now you have nothing. Hey, I think you're being unduly harsh on knows he made some mistakes, but in this society, if you're black, mistakes are greatly magnified, and retribution much greater, and the society much more critical and unforgiving. What happened to me had nothing to do with race or golf. I'm surprised at you. After all that has happened to you, you still think racism is in the back. Think your entire history of denying your essential blackness and your decision to earn a living in what was and still is the white dominant sport is merely just coincidental. 
do you not understand your preoccupation with white women and how about with white people and your phony smile and your pretentious humility was nothing but a pathetic masculine act. Was God being a part of that phoniness? You shouldn't knock out someone mixed with it. What's up? You could have your own identity issues. Now first, I'm not knocking out anyone that makes a living. Then again, I, I wouldn't knock out a whore that makes a living either. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be a fool to do that. Besides, that come on was all cold. Now can I speak my mind? Is that not what we're here doing? Of course. Well, let's start the meaning. Let's not start the meaning of joke. Nobody's demeaning anybody. And as for the so-called identity issues, I never sought to hide who I am. I was always true to myself, and I never tried to come off like I was white. Meanwhile, he married a white woman, just like I did, and lived in a mansion in a fancy neighborhood, made movies, and was laughing all the way to the bank. You are no different than me. Enough of this foolish bickering. Man, you both made lots of money and both ran with white people. So what? You're still black. That is something you could never deny. That we could never deny, no matter how much we try. So what's the problem? No problem. No problem. I just don't like someone trying to compare golf to football where people sustain real and serious physical damage. Mm -hmm. And don't forget that being exposed to danger is something that is uniquely part of the black experience in this country. Historically, blacks have worked the most dangerous jobs and had the hardest physical labor, and as a result, have shorter lifespans. That could also be due to lifestyle choices. Here we go again. <laughs> Blacks being their own worst enemies. I didn't say that. You did say that in so many words. Because of what I did for a living, my knees are shot. I have on the eyes, and I am on pain meds. But that doesn't make me my own worst enemy. And that goes for all of us. Except for maybe Will, you know, being an actor. I have my own medical issues too. That's, that's not what I'm talking about. You know, sometimes acting can be tough. I've been in a couple of movies. Nothing to it. If you forget your lines, it's all, there's, there's use, they use it too hard. I remember in one scene, I was in a fight with the man. He was playing the burden with broken into the home. Of course, if he was black. Actually, he wasn't. Then they were being politically correct. Or, or maybe, you're not remembering the story right. Maybe. You were playing bird. Not like I was in scope with shit. Anyway, in the fight scene, I took a bad fall. Why don't stop that? I don't know. Probably wanted to save money. Yeah? Yeah, figures. If you were white, they probably would have uh, used a stump double. That's hard to say. <laughs> he just said it. I heard him. Maybe being black has its challenges, but it was being black that helped you beat that double murder. Like I said before, I didn't murder anybody. But you were really upset that she was seeing another man. Yeah, I didn't like it. But that doesn't mean I would kill her. I don't know what I would have done if I saw my wife, or even my ex-wife, screwing around, around with another man. I might freak out too. Yeah, I never freaked out. But didn't you slaughter her? No! <laughs> You mean peeping through the window watching your wife? You mean my ex-wife? With another man, did it make your blood boil? Yeah, how would you feel if you saw me with your wife? I'm not married. Okay, then your girlfriend. If I'm done with her, then good. She's yours. Do you hear yourself? You're talking about women like you know, like they're objects to be used and then discarded. Mm. Aren't they? Are you playing with me? No, man, I'm not playing with you. What about human beings, just like men? We know they're human, but do they think that we're human? Women are taught to hate men, especially black women. That's why we gravitate to the white ladies. They're more appreciative of us. Yeah, my wife is white. Oh. <laughs> so, what's mine? My wife was black, 
And we've been married for decades. Mm. Why you trying to dope up and bless every white woman on the planet? <laughs> <laughs> what did that say about your so-called successful marriage? I never called it successful, just long. <laughs> well, that it lasted so long is a tribute to something. Thank you. I think. You don't mention it. Though. Ever since my son was murdered, I've contemplated committing suicide. Wow. Yeah. I heard about that. I was shocked. And I was so sad. Violence. We live in such a violent society. We're part of it. We're merciful. Yeah, all of us have known violence. Look what happened to my wife. <laughs> and that lady who I raped, she was a victim too. It just took me a while to admit that I was the predator. So, black men are the problem? I never assaulted anybody, but I was loved once. Who would be crazy enough to mug a big guy like you? <laughs> <laughs> when a little guy is holding a gun to your head, he suddenly becomes very big. You gotta remember that we're all targets. Is that black? Yes, he was. Man, black on black crime. What are all worst enemies? I hate that term, black on black crime. Crime is crime, period. It's not black, white, yellow, brown, or any other color, except maybe red for blood. And that's the one color that's the same for every human being on this planet. And when we get cut and bleed, it's as if the whole human race has been cut. Well said, my man. He said he was a poet. <laughs> I'll take that as a compliment. It was meant as well. Professor, whatever you say, I'm tired. It's time for me to go home. Well, it looks like this get together is breaking out. Uh, I'm going to a bar downtown street for a drink. Uh, anybody can join me. Right, I'm buying first round. Since you're buying, I'm here. Include me in two. 